Um, I'm Jessica Waldman. I'm, um, I'm a vet and I started uh, California Animal Rehab nine years ago. The concept but um, for me to start this rehab clinic was for veterinarians and physical therapists to work together. And I just have found that the knowledge base that a physical therapist brings, you know, and the experience that a vet brings is a really, really cool combo. So basically, we, um, we're pairing both professionals with the treatments of pets. There's five veterinarians certified in rehab and acupuncture, and there's four physical therapists there. We, our, our facility trains um, people to get certified in rehabilitation. Part of their certification program to do an internship. So we get people from all over the world that come. What are we doing prevention wise? And I think veterinary medicine got on it with like vaccines and certain preventative care. Everyone got on the medical preventative care bandwagon, I don't know, 10 years ago. But the physical preventative care, not yet. You know, so that's kind of one of my goals is not just, okay, now they have this issue, but what could we all be doing as part of our routines when we have a one year old and when we have, you know, I think that's really important too. Some things I think for young rabbits everyone should do is, you know, well, they can before they have, you know, the ailment that turns into stuff. You know, one thing would be work on paw placement. When we are walking down the street, you know, we're just strolling and we never think about, like, our footwork, right? We're thinking about what we're going to have for dinner or whatever, something irrelevant. But we never think about where we're putting our feet. But if we see an obstacle in the way, like a curb, we think, I have to step over that, you know, and then we do this. And all of a sudden the brain and the foot connected. You know, so that's a really important concept, I feel like, for prevention and once a pet has a disability or a pain or a weakness, is to always try to reinforce those kinds of behaviors. Put broomsticks or rakes or things on the ground, make those little obstacles, not only have them hop over it, but we call them spider pulls when they overlap in weird ways. You always want to trick the neurological system. It gets so used to, you know, the same thing over and over again. You know, but work on the core right away. How can you better deal with all the spinal issues that come and prevent it with A, strength, B, flexibility? When we talk about rehab or training, it's like use what they already want to do and then make that into a therapeutic exercise. So one thing that I always get in small disagreements with with our clients at work is when I'm like, are you doing your homework? So I was like, are you doing your homework? And they're like, well, I don't need to because my bunny does it on its own. I'm like, oh, this isn't going to work, you know. And so they'll say some, I'll say something like, well, if you're in the office and you have a desk job, you know, and you're sitting in your chair. Oh, I just found the table. Full. And you're sitting in the chair and you're typing and doing your stuff. And then you get up and you go get a drink. You, and five minutes later, you know, is that the same thing as controlled postural, you know, squats on and off your chair 20 times, three reps? So an important thing is if the rabbit's picking its own pathway, if um, cool obstacle course, you know, if we can get the bunny to, for a little treat, you know, turn to the side a little bit and work on its, you know, neck extent, neck turns, core stretching, you know, all directions, up and down, you know, it's repetition, it's reps, it's reps. You know, if they're having them do it once is hard. How can you get them to engage with you to, you know, kind of rep it out? And the other thing I think that's really good for young rabbits to do is um, for you to um, do repetitions of the, the up to beg and then back down. And have them do like a slow and controlled version. You know, when I think of the top things I think everyone should be doing, um, I think besides all those reps we just talked about, with like manual work or stretching, you know, I think hanging traction is really good. Because um, what we see by the time they come to us, they all have arthritis. Like they all have swollen joints. Like they don't have good range of motion anywhere. Okay, but that's actually not why they're there. They're there either for their head tilt stuff or because they have hind limb weakness and spinal issues. And that's really like the kicker that you're like, oh, now they're not functioning. You know, now I'm really, I'm in for it right now. You know, but, um, but basically hanging traction, you know, and so one of the main causes of this is disc disease, right? I mean, we don't always know for sure. You know, your vet can take x-rays and say, it looks like this, I suspect this, but it's not a for sure diagnosis, but it's just generally what happens with them. Um, so they have local pain and then the spinal cord gets squished by that bulging disc and then the signals to the whatever part, oftentimes the hind, but sometimes all four, will, you know, lose that connection, lose the sensation, lose the strength, you know, and then it's that downhill spiral. So, you know, hanging traction, actually, we do traction all the time. Like people are like, I hang upside down for my neck, you know, it's like, this is real and it totally helps. And, you know, when you hang a bunny, basically what you'll do is you'll, 
I prefer you to always support their back against your whole chest, so like their whole back here. You'll hold them facing out, so the rabbit's here, under their kind of um, armpits. And because we always worry about them doing a big kick and hurting their back, when you do it, you'll do it at a table, you know, a surface that's comfortable. And you will let those feet go flat on the table a little bit. Okay, so you wouldn't have to squat down in this awkward position. You'd be up higher, right, because the table will be higher. And you, and you feel that force of letting the rabbit hang. You know, and that is a good prevention exercise. That's really good for pain management. That's why people hang themselves all the time for spinal pain. I mean, it's a really kind of easy thing to do. I think everyone should do that. So you can, in order to get more sensory inputs, the concept is this is normal. What is this? Wow, we talked about when you walk down the street how you don't think about your pop placement, but if something's poking you in the foot, you're like, whoo, you know, like, whoa, what is that? And your brain's firing and the connection's going through your spinal cord that's damaged. Um, so basically, sensory inputs, A, putting them on different surfaces, always different, different, different surfaces is really important. And then the other thing is, um, you know, doing it with your, with your hands. So you have a rabbit foot, you know, tickling each toe, pinching it, flicking it, taking whatever strange objects you have around you don't ever want to do things the same with the neurological systems it gets bored and it, start, it starts to ignore you you know so lots of lots of different sensory inputs so you're always making the connection between the foot it goes up the leg it goes through the spinal cord it goes to the brain and comes back and it's like I feel it now I'm gonna move pinch that foot until it pulls away okay and that's actually a strengthening exercise too so I think those are kind of easy things whether it's a prevention thing or you already have a little bit of, of weakness for you know your bunny tail traction too so it depends on the tail in the rabbit but so you kind of have to picture that their rear end because you know they're really hunched like this like their spine and so their rear end really comes all the way around to their tail and it's really down <laughs> it's pointed and rounded under so when you do tail traction it's the same concept as hanging traction but you can get a more kind of consistent you decide how much pressure to put on there to pull same concept, traction of the spine is going to mobilize or move the nerves that are all stuck in, you know, all that connective tissue. And pinched nerves can actually get real relief from, from maneuvering it. So when you do tail traction, I would, you know, hold right at the base of the tail, so as close up to the body as you can. And then if this is the spine and this weird trajectory going down, pull the tail in the direction of the spine. So not out, not up, you know, but, but right down, and it's a little, little bit. And when you guys practice this, if you put your fingers on the spine of the rabbit anywhere on the spine, you'll feel the spine move. And so you'll realize that you're pulling the tail, you're pulling the whole spinal column, you know, and that's how you know how much pressure to pull because you'll feel that little bit of the spine move underneath your fingers. And then you'll hold that for like 10 to 15 seconds, you know, three reps. So I think that's a really, really helpful thing to deal with, to help prevent and get more comfort out of the spinal cord issues that are, you know, basically the head.